Jones Road claims that they've reinvented powder with these new tinted formulas, so we're gonna test them out in today's video, see if that's true. So this new product is called their Tinted Face Powder, so it says this is powder reinvented. Tinted face powder is a finely milled, ultra lightweight setting powder designed to seamlessly blend into your skin, set foundation, color correct, and minimize shine without looking like you're wearing powder. It's exactly what you've come to expect from Jones Road, a fresh modern take on a traditional staple. So to use this, it says dip the powder brush, which I have from them, tap off the excess, and then apply to set your complexion products. It also says that traditional powders can make your skin appear flat or leave creasiness and cakiness. Thanks to its ultra lightweight formula, tinted face powder is virtually undetectable on skin. So it claims to be undetectable, lightweight, creaseless, all the things. So what's really cool about this powder is they came out with eight different shades, which I've never really seen a range like this in powder. So they have an untinted version and then the seven others have a tint to them. So there's a yellow, pink, rose, light, medium, dark, and deep. The two I'll be testing today is the untinted and the pink, which are the ones that are recommended for fair skin. To start with packaging, they just come in their classic paper packaging. And then this is what the component looks like. They are pretty simple little powder containers and they have 6.5 grams in each powder. So you open it up and it has a twist top and then powder comes out there. This is the brush that they recommend you use. It's their powder brush. These are super soft. They make beautiful brushes. I'm going to start with actually, well, I need to put concealer on first. So I'm gonna use one that I'm very, very, very familiar with just to test the powder and not really the concealer. So this is my Jouer concealer. I use this a ton. If you watch my channel, you know that. Do you already have my foundation on and everything? And I don't have corrector on, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of concealer under my eyes. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend this out with my sponge. So to actually test if this pink version truly does have an effect under my eyes, I will be doing one of each and we'll see if there's a difference to them. So I'm not gonna be using the big brush to set my under eyes. I'm going to be using a clean Real Techniques setting brush. And before we set, I'm also going to make sure that I smooth out all my creases. So I will be starting with the untinted version on this brush. Just took a little bit to start and we'll see how this works. Oh, by the way, these are ingredient wise. They're cornstarch based silica rice powder powders, which I find can be very drying if you're not careful. That's why I'm starting with just a little bit. Okay, first impressions is that was truly translucent, which is great for fair skin because sometimes powders can deepen our under eyes, which I don't like. I feel like it basically is clear. It looks really good. It definitely is very mattifying. I don't feel like I had to use a ton of it to get like a very set down look. Let me clean off this brush and then we'll try our pink version, which is this guy here. This is a very light baby pink color. When I swatched it on my hand, didn't notice a big difference of color, but we'll see how it looks under the eyes. I think this pink shade is really cool for, well, pink's gonna sort of um, cancel out your dark circles a little bit, but also as a transition shade between your powder and blush. Like I've always wanted to try a pink powder. This is probably not something I'd put all over my face because I do have an olive undertone. I feel like pink usually looks very off on me if I do put it all over my face. Don't notice a huge difference. This is the pink side, that's the clear side. I noticed it a little bit like on this part of my eye, not necessarily right under my eye. Let me try to put a little bit more on and see if that changes anything. I'm just gonna blend it right here. Okay, I'm noticing the pink very slightly. It is very, very subtle. I don't think you could even tell on camera. It does have a slight brightening effect to it. I'm gonna take more of the pink shade and put it on the tops of my cheekbones. Cause I, like I said, I wanted to see if it would be like a cool blush transition shade. Yeah, okay, I'm noticing the pigment a lot more once I put it on my cheek. We'll say it's not looking the greatest under my eye. These types of powders can just be so drying. Yeah, it looks like a little bit scaly. Now I'm taking their powder brush and I'm gonna use the untinted version and applying it lightly to the brush like they suggested. I'm just gonna lightly set the rest of my face. I will say it definitely feels extremely weightless on my skin and around my face, it really doesn't look like powder. I don't know, the thing with these formulas of powder though is they really like accentuate any dryness. 
I didn't even realize I had a little bit of a dry patch here, but it sort of clung on to that. And same with under my eyes. They're just, I don't know. I've tried a lot of like these cornstarch based powders in the past and they can be very, very drying. And I don't even necessarily have dry skin either. I am pretty oily. So let me try to show you a close up. Might not be able to see a lot of detail. I'll actually film it on my phone and show you what it's looking like. Just slightly like dry and scaly looking under my eyes. Yeah, with my phone camera, the rest of my face looks pretty good, but there's just specifically this eye. I don't know why. It looks kind of like scaly looking. I feel like since that powder is so matte, I really need some shimmery base products. So for bronzer, I'm gonna use this Chantecaille shimmer. What is this called? It's the Real Bronze in Sienna. And we'll see how this works over the powder. Powder applied really nicely over it, no complaints with that. Using my RMS blush in the French Rose, my current obsession. I do like the idea of that tinted pink powder as like a blush transition. I wish it had slightly more color to it, especially since these are such mattifying powders that you need to use a really tiny amount of them, that if they made it a little bit more pigmented than with the amount that I would like to use, get a little bit more impact. I guess I'll do a quick little eye look with you on camera. I'm just using a ColourPop, this palette. Stone Cold Fox palette. I'm gonna just do something super quick and easy. Funny, I haven't liked a lot of Jones Road products in the past, but I know it's just not like a makeup brand really geared towards the type of makeup that I like. If you watch my makeup type videos, this is definitely like a natural makeup brand. It's made for people who kind of, you want that really like minimal look. I'm gonna go ahead and pop in some videos of what this powder looks like in direct sunlight and natural light as well. Really like to give you guys all the perspective. Definitely not my favorite powder look so far. I've been using the Haley's Beauty one and really liking it. That one's like pretty translucent. I don't know, just like not as smoothing as I would want it to be. I'm really curious to see if I can get this pink powder to show up. So what I'm gonna do is do two swatches of a concealer that is dark on me and then we're gonna set them with each shade and see if we can notice a bigger difference so i have this concealer here let me blend them out a little bit okay so that was actually pretty cool to do there is a significant tint with this one i think what the big difference is and why this didn't show up on my face is because this concealer was very tacky when i set it but there is quite a lot of pigment if you're setting something that is a bit more creamy and again, I did use quite a lot of product on these. So when you're doing it on your face, it's going to be a lot more subtle than that. But I'm glad that the pigment actually did show up on this swatch. Because if that was blended out more, that would be a nice pink tint. So now that I have the rest of my face on, I think I have some more thoughts about this. I think you would get more color payoff for the tinted ones at least if you do use a creamier, more dewy concealer because I think using this UA one, which is more of like a satiny matte finish to begin with, and then using this super mattifying powder, it just set it really quickly and then the pigment didn't have a lot to stick to because that's what I really noticed with this. I used a really creamy concealer and then I got a lot more color payoff. This pink would be really nice to counteract um, dark circles under the eyes. This isn't something I would necessarily use all over my face, but I do like it as like that transition shade. This untinted one is truly untinted. Like there's absolutely no color on the face. I would reach for this again to set my face, especially if I want oil controlling properties because these cornstarch rice powder base powders, they are very, very mattifying and oil controlling as opposed to talc powders. They also feel a lot lighter on the skin if you want that like very light dusting. So I think these are kind of made for people who don't like powders, the feeling of powders, the look of powders. Under my eyes, they're just not looking the best. I have had this experience before with other powders of this formula, just not looking the best on my skin personally. They are something I would use for my face. The verdict is still out. I'm gonna have to continue to play with them and use them with creamier concealers to see if I could get a better payoff. Maybe try using more product and less product. I will have to update you, but I will also wear this to the end of the day and we'll see how well it controls powder and how it looks under my eyes if it gets worse or it's get 
or if it gets better there will be a check-in at the end i am wearing the kosas foundation by the way which is another product i'm very familiar with so verdict is still out on these it was really interesting to try them i love this powder brush this is one thing i could say that is really nice it is super soft and i feel like it doesn't completely mattify your skin either like you still have that slight slight glow to your skin which is nice so we will see if you are at this point in the video comment below if you think that it's gonna wear well throughout the day or maybe it's gonna end up looking worse under my eyes let me know your predictions and we'll see if you're right so this will be my first check-in it is 1 14 i will wear it until the end of the day and show you the update but yeah i will see you then so this was my final check-in it was around 10 30 and wasn't super impressed with how it ended up looking i was still pretty oily so it didn't really give me tons of oil control that like scaly part under my eyes still look pretty scaly and also on my chin the foundation started to break up which usually doesn't happen when i use that kosas foundation with other powders so i think that the fact that it has a cool shade range is the pro but in terms of the formula it's not really anything that stands out to me as something that's like amazing or different 